Hi and welcome to Green Country Custom Baits. Uh, today we're going to shoot a very informative video over stencils and masks to paint crankbaits. Uh, there's going to be a lot of information in this video, so uh, if this is the first time you've been here, appreciate you stopping in and uh, I uh, definitely would, would recommend, uh, and I'll put a call to check out some of the earlier videos where we break down uh, everything you need in order to do uh, your own custom crankbaits. So, uh, but again, let's, uh, without further ado, let's dive right into what we're going to talk about today, and that is stencils and masks to produce all different types of crankbait patterns. First off, we're going to start with the shad pattern. Um, one of the very first patterns that I done was to mimic some type of thread fin or gizzard shad. And uh, uh, as we all know, you can buy those patterns without scaling, but if you add some scaling to it, uh, it adds a whole other dimension of realism to your bait. So one of the most common ones I use is one of these bass scrubbers. Uh, they're really um, easy to use. They're very inexpensive. You can find them at about any department store. Uh, and I like them because there's a little bit of stretch. Now, you know, you can boil these and, and lay them out and eventually they'll harden up to where they don't have quite as much stretch, but uh, you can manipulate that mass. Uh, let me get a piece here that's single to where, you know, you've got large circles, you can have small circles, diamonds. Uh, it's pretty unlimited in what you can do with these. And I'll show you some other method, methods that I use uh, to do those. Some other great products that you can get in any of your grocery stores is, is, is bags that small onions or garlic come in. Uh, it's a little bit thicker material. Uh, I find that it's uh, very good in using uh, when trying to do patterns where you're shooting at an angle and you want to kind of leave a white edge to it. This thicker material really helps that effect, okay? Uh, but that's another product that you can use for scales. Uh, I don't do this one much for scales, but I do use this, uh, and again, this is, uh, I don't know if small oranges or something came in this bag, but again, in your grocery section, you can find just all sorts of different products uh, that can be used to create different patterns, but uh, this one here is, is another one that I use occasionally. Uh, when I'm doing some pumpkin seed patterns, uh, a lot of times I'll use... Uh, it's a, it's, a, it's a ribbon. It comes in a roll that, like this. This stuff will last you a lifetime. Uh, you can double it up. You can shoot it you know, through one layer. Uh, but again, this can really add a lot of depth to your lures. I also use this in crankbaits. I mean, excuse me, in, in my crawl patterns. Uh, going back to the, uh, some smaller meshes that you can find. This is Bridal Veil that was come from Hobby Lobby. I think it in the... Uh, that full or glitter ribbon both came from the, a local Hobby Lobby here, uh, but this is generally just only good for your you know real small crankbaits. But again, you can find products with all different sizes of mesh in order to get different sizes of scales. Uh, uh, kind of a unique way uh, in order to do that. Again, if you're going to use one of these products, the most common method, uh, and this is a large piece, but is you would just uh, wrap it around your bait, okay? Uh, cut it off to, you know, basically whatever fits it. Get it to uh, however you want your scales, whether you want them this direction. Uh, you can place the bait in this, this way here and, and pull it tight to get your scales in this pattern. Again, you can stretch them to make them larger or smaller. Get them how you want them. You'll need some of these small little alligator clips. Uh, again, cheap at any automotive store. Walmart carries them. And uh, clip that. This is too big a piece for me to demonstrate, but uh, clip it on there, and that'll hold that mesh in place for you. And then you can do a, a complete bait with scales all over it. Uh, if you're only wanting to scale maybe the top half of the bait, again, I like using these X-Acto knife blades, and I've got... Uh, some holes drilled into my paint booth, and I will put them in hoops. You can get them in all different sizes. 
I'll probably use this size more than anything just due to the size of baits that I do. But, uh, you know, your small lures can fit inside that as well. But uh, if you're only wanting to do one portion of the bait, uh, you can just use one hand, place it up there, hold it firm, and spray your scales and remove it. Okay, so uh, again, a great, great method to use this. I use these also when doing my uh, real scale patterns. Here's another bait that's kind of been sandblasted and sanded off. Uh, I can put two hoops together, position them how I want them, and then I've got a set of magnets here that I will put a magnet on each side above and below it to hold that bait in place. And then again, you can shoot your scale pattern through uh, it's sandwiched between two hoops, okay? And again, and I'll shoot some video on how I get the mesh inside these and get it tight and get it to the, the uniform scales that I, that I prefer, okay? I'll shoot a video on that in this series. Uh, and that pretty much covers most of the things that I use in order to do scale patterns to replicate our bait fish, so. Getting your bass scrubber inside the, <clears throat> the hoop. You just want to lay it out, spread it out, and get the top in. I've got the hoop unscrewed as loose as I can, and just stretch it to the pattern that you want the scales to look at. It's going to be tough to see on camera, but I'll just work around getting that mesh. pretty tight in there, getting the shape that I want, and then I'll push that down, tighten up our hoop. These are just cheap and expensive ones from Walmart, and we'll just trim off the excess, and you've got you a nice little hoop for scale mesh. And again, this is one of the methods I like to use, uh, especially on larger baits. This one here is for some of these bigger baits I've got. And I've got small ones. They make all different size, all the way up to large. So uh, there you go. Probably tough to see the mesh, but again, if you've got a bait, you can just press that up against it, spray, or in the case of doing the real scale, you can sandwich it between two of them. So that's how I make the hoop nets with the scale mesh inside. This could even be a crawl pattern, crawl patterns like this. And I made all of those with a product called Frisket Film. And when I first started, uh, this is what I, I started with. I'd probably watched some YouTube videos and uh, the thing that's kind of unique about this particular film is one side of it's paper and one side of it is a clear mesh that can actually be, not a mesh, but a clear, clear material that can be peeled off and actually stuck to the lure if you wanted to stick it to the lure and then reposition it on another piece of paper and you can reuse it quite a few times, okay? And if you stick it to the lure, you're going to get real clean edges around whatever design shape uh, that, that, you, that you picked out. Okay, But it's pretty much unlimited to your creativity. Uh, in my business, a lot of times people will send me uh, a discontinued lure and want that pattern replicated, uh, especially the color pattern. This is an old storm wiggle wart pattern. I still use this a lot today, and again, just position them uh, against the bait, and again, most of the time when I'm using this method, I'm using this or I've got it on helping hands. The thing, I reason I like these better is I can have a multitude of, of lures. I can have 20 or 30 lures out there. If they're all getting the same pattern, I can stick it in my paint booth. I generally, I've got holes drilled at different angles. Uh, position the bait where I want it and shoot the paint through it. Okay, 
and go over here and place it in my stand and move on to the next pattern. But again, you can see a lot of these I don't use as much anymore now that I've uh, become a little, quite a bit more familiar over the last 10 or 15 years with the airbrush. Uh, but again, I've got lots and lots of different patterns that I've, that I've used. Uh, some kind of crazy, unique looking ones. And uh, again, it's just, uh, uh, you're only limited to your create, how creative you are and really what kind of pattern you want to do. So that was my first method of using uh, frisket film. And then I found out that you could buy uh, online different uh, suppliers. And I'll leave links in the description below on where I've gotten some of these, but uh, these are on a real thick, very reusable piece of plastic, and you can buy crawl patterns and, and different designs. Here is a perch pattern, uh, and I had, you know, quite a few of those. Uh, when you're doing pumpkin seeds and you want the little dots and all that, you, you know, you could buy a host of different different ones there. So. I uh, transitioned into this as my next method, uh, working up, and then uh, started buying stencil material myself. And uh, where's my little stencil burner? This is a stencil burner you can buy. It's fairly inexpensive uh, little tool, and draw your pattern out on on your stencil material. Excuse me, phone's ringing and then just melt in or burn in and trace the lines uh, and come up with whatever pattern you want. You can also use an X-Acto knife or a Dremel tool and, and, and cut those patterns out. So you can see I've, I've used different ones for bars on uh, bait fish, crawl patterns, uh, trying to replicate some crawl patterns from uh, Rapala and different different ones that I've done. Here's a, here's a Magnum Wiggle Wart one and Again, this was my next method. Uh, to kinda, I'm kind of cheap and don't always want to go buy everything and kind of like the do-it-yourself stuff. So, uh, And we may shoot a video later on how, how I made these. Okay, But again, uh, a little bit of an investment for uh, the stencil burner, uh, the stencil plastic. Generally comes in a sheet like this and it's got a film on it and, and you, can, you can draw on it and, and burn your pattern out. Okay, so that's a that's another method uh, that I've used over the years, and one that I still use today. Uh, and I'll show you when we get into this binder. But uh, some other things that you can use to cut stencils out, and I can show you. If, uh, I've got tons of these. Just some overhead projector sheets. Real. Uh, again, they'll last forever. You can do crawl patterns, shad patterns. Uh, over here on the left. These are some stuff that I, I still use a lot today uh, if I'm trying to get particular crawl patterns. Cool. And then I can lay that up there and spray that eye, okay? And we'll do some videos on how to paint eyes and, and on base uh, as we progress throughout the this tutorial. Okay, again, here's just some more plastics that you can buy at, at your Hobby Lobbies and different things to create stencils. So, uh, that's one product. You can see here's my little binder of all my different stencils that's been cut on frisket film. Okay, I got my zombie series, and this is by bait so that I can reuse them. Okay, here's my rock crawlers uh, stencils that I use in the zombie line. Uh, if I'm really wanting a lot of detail, and I don't, you know, I you can now this is not this is for little johns here but again this is the sticky portion of it uh, when you're using the overhead projector sheets when you're using any of these other masks stencils uh, you know you're not going to get good clean lines okay uh, you may have a little bit of feathering underneath it depends on how much detail you want if you take the fis frisket film off and you stick it to the bait, you're going to get an extremely clean line at the bottom. It allows you uh, to do your, your shading onto the inside of the bait. Uh, and we'll show you some different patterns, and we'll use these all the time. But again, that's frisket film, and you can see I still use it uh, the majority of the time 
for most all of my crawl patterns. Uh, and then when using uh, when using products like these, whether it's stencil, overhead projector sheets, like I said, when you put it up there, you're not going to get quite as fine of, of, of a line at the bottom as you would if you stuck it to it. But if I'm doing a lot of them, this kind of gives me just a guide. A lot of times now I go back and, and go back over the bait anyway and add different colors and uh, things like that to the bait. Okay, so again, just a whole host of different materials here that you can use. I need to get some of this out of the way to where we can see some of the other products. So as we've transitioned through, one of the other methods that I got into and again, seen several videos online on how to uh, use this thermal plastic and a vacuum, make your own vacuum deals where you can place your bait on the vacuum heat the plastic, suck it down over the top, and then cut your pattern out that you wish, okay? So this is uh, for a speed trap, the old lure gentle speed trap, and a uh, highly requested pattern is the crystal crawl pattern, and so uh, when a customer wants that, he wants it exactly. So uh, and here's actually a, the crystal crawl pattern, okay? So how that worked is you just, you know, place your bait after you have formed it to the bait, the plastic, and you cut your thing out with a Dremel tool, most generally is what I use, then you could just spray your your pattern uh, through it and get your get your baits pattern put on there. So again, that's another thing I use for a lot of different patterns. Some of this doesn't work for some of my patterns, but for bait fish, for some details like this, it's a great pattern to use. And you see I've got several different ones. Here's one for the wiggle wart. I've got boxes, this whole thing's full of wart. wart. Uh, I've, I've tried different methods. There's one with where I'm, I've vacuum formed it from the top of the bay. Got some where I've vacuum formed it from, that was another one from the top. Here's some from the side where I've done crawl patterns. Uh, I've just, I've, I've formed them all different ways. So uh, those are, uh, excellent ways to, to make stencils, and it's, again, easy. And it, you, you can figure it out. There's tons of YouTube videos all out there on how to do it. Here's a rattle trap one with my, the zombie pattern that I use. Uh, and then that transformed into, uh, well, and another thing, and I'll tell you, Dakota Lakes is one of them, uh, where you can, you can go out and pick whatever body you want. I believe this is Spro Rock Crawler. Uh, and and purchase those, and they're not real expensive. And then skip the whole have to vacuum form it yourself, and all you got to do is go in there and put what pattern you want on it, and cut it out with a Dremel tool or an X-Acto knife, and you can go to work. So you can also buy them products already made for you, depending on what bodies you want to shoot. Most of these guys have them uh, in about everybody out there. So. Uh, and then let's get into the, the 3D printing. Now, you know, I don't make these. I have to buy them. They're, I bought all of mine from Lure Color Studios in Australia, and uh, they are excellent. Uh, make, let's see if I'll pull. I've got a wiggle work bait out here. Uh, let's see. Yep, that's exact task. Now, this one was uh, two different stencils uh, in order to get all the patterns, but uh, again, these work. They've been 3D printed, and you sandwich it between your bait. You use uh, these little alligator clips. Most of the time, they ship with the stencil when you buy them. And uh, I'll leave a link to Lear Color Studios. 74 tackles done them now. There's, there's several guys out there doing them. So uh, that holds it firm to your bait. And with these, you do have to have a, some pretty good airbrush skills in order to spray it just exactly where you want it, okay? Just on the inside, and you got to stop at a certain point. Uh, this particular stencil is a two stencil set, so. Uh, but these are bait fish patterns, and this one in particular is was also a two, two one to where you could do the, the broader bands and you can come back with fine lines on the outside of them. Actually, three-step. This has done the gill plate. 
Okay, so, you know, and great, great product. But again, you got to go buy them. You got to pay some pretty good money to get those, and you got to have them for every single lure that you're going to do. Okay, so, but as a beginner, these things greatly help you in getting started and being able to uh, put out some really nice products uh, without the the experience needed in order to uh, in order to uh, do these patterns just using an airbrush and, and you know if you haven't seen my story I started 10 or 15 years ago in custom lure art and I had no formal training with an airbrush whatsoever so you know if I can do it you can do it it just takes time and it takes some takes some uh, a lot of time behind that airbrush you know to get good at it uh, I think I've just got one more product I'm going to show today, and this is an Art Tool Stretch Mask. Uh, it's a real thin film. It's kind of like frisket paper, uh, but you can you can also use that. And it's just another product that can be be purchased. And and again, uh, most of this is very, very inexpensive. The only thing I think that you know you you may have twenty to fifty dollars depending on what bait and how many stencils are required to do that pattern for that particular lure uh, but really this is the only investment the thermal plastic sheets all that can be purchased on amazon or online at a multitude of places and and frisket film at hobby lobbies and walmarts and and create your own pattern so uh you know that's the fun of this business is going out there and and, and doing it yourself anyway or it was for me anyway uh, but uh, I hope that answers most of your questions. Or and, and if it hasn't, because I'm new at this filming myself and I'm not very good at it. Uh, uh, here, well, let me show you. I got one more here. Uh, Art Tools has some really good stencils. If you're looking for some details, they've got a lot of different ones. I use this FX Texture, and it was a mini in the mini series. If I can get it out of there, and it come with three different ones and uh, just puts different textures on baits. I use it a lot on my crawl patterns uh, just to provide some depth of color uh, to the baits, okay? Uh, so anyway, that's, a, that's the last one we'll show today. Again, there's many, many more, but those are the ones that I've particularly used in, in the methods. And then when we start actually shooting our airbrush uh, or using our airbrush and start shooting some paint, uh, you're going to see me use all of these methods, and I'll go in much more detail on on it. But if you'd like to see some videos on how I cut the stencils, uh, then by all means, leave a comment in the box below. So, uh, again, thank you for step, uh, stopping by and checking out the channel, and I uh, hope it was an informative. Hope I didn't rush through it. Uh, and, again, uh, if you haven't seen some of the other videos in the series, I've got a playlist called The Complete Tutorial for Beginners, uh, where we start with uh, picking an airbrush, compressor, what setup do you want to do, how many, what paints do I need in order to get started. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description and uh, uh, for all those future, uh, future, for all those previous videos and uh, uh, again, I want to appreciate, uh, thank you for stopping in and checking out the channel and hope that I can help some beginners out there. So uh, until next time.